Welcome back to the Cozy Rosie Crochet Channel and today I'm going to be sharing with you how to edge your panels in the Jolly Holiday Blanket Crochet Along. Now I've just worked up three of my panels all together and I want to get a head start on this and no doubt you want to as well. Each of the panels that we're making, I've just finished the snowman one here, we're going to be adding an edging on that we can use to then join our, to join our panels a little bit easier. Now materials wise, I am using the same size hook, which is a five and a half millimeter hook with my Aran or worsted weight yarn. I'm using a contrasting color to start my border and my joining in, which is gonna be this paint box yarns, Simply Aran in shade number 202, which I believe is champagne white off the top of my head. We're simply gonna be working all the way around the edge of each of our panels now I haven't woven my ends in yet. If you know me, you know that I wouldn't have done because I'm gonna work over these when I'm doing my edging, at least on these panels. I won't need to know exactly where those edges are and I can get them buried in. You can add this edging on to all of your currently finished panels and of course each panel as you move through the rest of the crochet along. It just means you don't have to leave it all into the end. So I wanted to get this out early for you so you can make a start on getting these ready so that as soon as that joining hits and is published, you can get going with joining all of your panels. Gather all your materials and at least one of your panels and let's get started. Hmm. One of the most important things when you're following a pattern is to know which side is the right side and which is the wrong side because in this pattern, we're going to be adding our edging to the panels with the right side of our panels facing us. But when we join them, they're going to be facing the wrong side. So for me, that means that I'm looking for the direction of my stitches. I don't know if it's the way that I crochet, but for me, it becomes really obvious that that's my right side and that's my wrong side. <clears throat> it's definitely more visible when you're working rows of double crochet. If you've already blocked it, it might not be quite so obvious. So the alternative is to find your slip knot. And that's where I am going to start working my edging for this panel. So I'm going to join into where the slip stitch was right at the very beginning of starting this panel. I'm just going to place my yarn over my hook with the tail facing away from me and bring it back through where I inserted my hook. We're going to start by working on the other side of our beginning chain, which is why I said that it wasn't that important to work through the back bump because we are working on the other side of it doing this edging. We are going to make a chain of one ready to work one single crochet into the same place as our slip stitch. And I'm going to work over both of these edges as we continue to work one single crochet into each of the chains across it working the other side of our chains here so if you're not sure where it is it'll be right at the bottom of where you placed your stitch and it almost appears like there's a ridge or a cross where those two parts of the remainder of our chain are so we've worked into the bottom of this one that slip knot makes it a bit more hard to see and this is where we're going to be working next you see my nail coming through there so we're just going to insert the hook into that hole at the bottom of that stitch. I'm gonna grab my ends and pop them over my hook as well. And then work the next single crochet. We're going to work one US single crochet into each of these chains across over to our corner. Now we know that we started with a, pull that tight. We're aiming for a total of 64 single crochets working across the other side of this beginning chain. So continue to work across over to your last stitch, which will be at the bottom of your chain three from the starting row. And I'll meet you there just to double check our stitch count. We're just working one single crochet into each of the ends of the other side of our chain, aiming for a stitch count of 64. I'll see you in a moment. I've just reached the chain three that we were with and originally skipped three chains from the beginning of our square and I'm going to insert my hook making sure that I've got 
two bits of that bottom chain just to stop it going a bit wonky. And this counts as our first corner. So once we've worked that final stitch in there, we're going to make a chain of two to create a corner and we're going to rotate our work to work along the row ends. Now, when we're working into the ends of double crochet, ideally we're aiming to work two single crochets into each row. So we know that all of our panels have got a row count of 30. So we're going to be aiming for a stitch count of 60 when we reach that top corner there. You should, of course, have a stitch count of 64, having worked across the bottom of our panel. And we're now going to be working, we're going to work back into this one first. So that counts as number one. And we're aiming to work two single crochets into each row end. So that's one. And I'm popping number two in there. And then we need to work through the end here. So like the middle of that row. And again, we're we looking to get two bits of that stitch or chain. We're looking to get our hook through two bits or two strands of our chain or our stitch from the row end. That will help to keep your stitches at a similar height all the way down the edge of your project. So we have one, two, three, and we've reached another row end. So we're just going to work into there. So that's number four. And then number five is going to go through. Again, we're looking to grab two bits of that stitch or chain. And then we're back to the end of the row again. So you can see that your even number of your stitch goes into the row end and then your odd number is going to go through the side of your chain. Just means you don't have to count as accurately. But what we're aiming for is for our stitches to look quite a similar height and evenly spaced. So continue to work up. As I said, I'm working my even numbers into my row ends and my odd number into the end here and that should take us all the way up to 60 when we reach where we fastened off at the end of our project. So keep working across placing 60 single crochets evenly across the row ends and I'll meet you for our next corner. Just had a sneaky little count and I am up to 59 so I'm just going to place number 60 into the bottom where we fastened off in that top of the corner. So we then make another chain of two. Double check that you do have a count of 60. That way all your squares will be the same. Once we've made that chain two, we're rotating again, ready to work back along the top of row 30. So we're gonna work one single crochet into the same where we've just worked that chain two and that previous single crochet. And then we're working one single crochet into the top of each stitch across over to the next corner. Once again, we should have a stitch count of 64 after. So from that first, so from that chain two space, we should have a stitch count of 64 over to the next corner. Keep working across and I'll meet you there. So I've worked all the way across the top of my square and I've reached the beginning chain three from the start of row 30. So I'm just going to insert my hook to work stitch number 60 into the top of that turning chain. Of course, we need to make our chain of two ready to rotate and we're going to work back down across the row ends again. So I'm working back into that same space to work that first stitch. And then we're going to be working 60 single crochets evenly down the side of this panel. So keep working down, working a total of 60 single crochets evenly all the way down to our final corner. And I'll meet you there so we can work our final corner stitch and join to end this round. So I've worked my way down. And I've got to number 58, so I still have two stitches to work. We are going to work that into the end there. It's fine. No one's going to know. 
and it won't impact on the style. I mean, really, I suppose I could squeeze one in here and get my hook through. Oh, I can. That's where 59 goes. Silly me. Then number 60 goes back into the same space as what was our original um, slip stitch. Now, as you can see, it's already looking a little bit holy. So I'm going to be a bit cheeky and pick up the loop from the stitch next to it. And then through there, just to help close that hole. See how much difference that makes? Make number 60. I'm going to make a chain of two. And then we're simply going to slip stitch into that first single crochet that we made. Once we've made that slip knot, we are ready to fasten off. Now, I know that I'm going to be starting my joining in this colour but I would like to use the rest of this ball to edge all of my squares. So I'm gonna weave all these ends in, make sure everything's secure. I can't find my scissors, so I'll cut this in a moment. But that gives our square a really pretty edge. You could then go on, of course, and use this as a placemat, which I have done previously, or you can use it as a wall hanging, because it does, it does show up best against either a dark or a light background. But either way, get all of your squares edged. Get the first three done that have already been released. So you've had your angel, your snowman and your reindeer. Those videos are already for you. You can find all of those links in the description box. And of course, there are a few more to come. Whether you're making nine or 12 different panels, it's entirely up to you. So thank you for joining me for this tutorial today. Of course, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.